Welcome to another He Said, She Said, and I'm here with Denise, and we're going to talk about a wonderful topic today, one that everyone can resonate with on a deeper level. Um, but first, my name is Ronald Johnson, and what I do is I help high performers facing burnout. If you're looking to create more joy, more peace in your life, you want that strategies and how to create more joy and peace in your life, this is where I can help you. Now, Denise, let's hit it out the park. <laughs> Thank you. I will catch that ball, Ron. I'm Denise Lewis, and I am with GrandSlamCoaching.com, and I am a performance-based coach. Whether you're on the field or off the field, I want to help you be the best performer you can be, whether it's the boardroom, the courtroom, or the classroom. I am here on this Monday morning with my fabulous Coke and a smile. Baseball is back. Everybody's happy. Yay. Awesome. And Ron, this is going to be a great day. I can tell already because we have a fantastic topic today. Yeah, today's topic is respecting a person's model of the world. Okay, I'll say it again. Respect a person's model of the world. Now, for some people that have done coaching and understand it, may get it right away. But for those out there that haven't, what you really got to do is come down to this. Everybody you meet has a separate journey. Everybody you meet has a separate culture. Everybody you meet has a different view of what's right, wrong, good, or bad. So because they don't accept your view of right and you don't accept theirs, doesn't mean you guys can't be respectful. Most of the time Absolutely. it's you're wrong, I'm right. You know, someone has to win and someone has to lose. Technically there's no right, wrong, good or bad is that we have to respect a person's feeling, respect their view. You know, if someone comes from a different culture, Maybe eating meat may not be their culture. You can't turn around and say, oh, eating meat is good. Or you should eat meat. It's good for you. We're not respecting their view of the world. So that's a simple way of saying respect a person's model world. And I will say this. I, I've been training for years and I did. And when I first started training, I would always think, for the first year at least, <laughs> that every client wanted to be a bodybuilder. Every client wanted huge muscles. Every client wanted this. It took about 18 months to really say, ding, 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 ding. Hey, Ron, look, you can't lead a client where they don't want to go. So if you don't want to bench press 150 pounds, or they don't want to deadlift 150 pounds, you can't get them there. When they're ready to get there, you meet them and you support them. Absolutely. But what came down, down, to the, down to a very basic fundamental is that you need to allow the client guide you. Even and you if know, the goal. And you know, Ron, I'm going to stop you just, just for a minute there because I want to applaud you and congratulate you for figuring that out after 18 months because so many people don't figure it out for years. For so years. Thank you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But please continue with your story because yes, so, you, you can't lead, you cannot lead the horse to water. No, <laughs> and especially doesn't want to drink. Yeah. Yeah, right. Especially doesn't drink. I like the old school saying. Can't lead a horse, can't, can't force a horse to drink water if he doesn't want to. Can't lead, exactly. lead the water, but if he doesn't want to drink, it's up to him. Absolutely. But more or less, it boiled down to, I had to figure out my client's model of the world, which I can use it now, but figure out where they respond at. Some clients want to come to the gym and they just want to work out. They're not trying to, it may say like trying to lose some weight and trying to get stronger, but at their energy and their body language says, hey, I like you, Ron. I'm going to build a relationship with you. I'm going to work out. Respect that because even though you would love to have them get the results you want to achieve, that's not where they want to be. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, I don't care how good you are but as, a, as a trainer or a coach, in reality, you may have 20 people, only three actually get the results you want them to achieve. Most people just better work out. But more important, I forgot one thing. Welcome to episode 14, but that's well, I want to talk about model of the world and that's how you have to view it. So, so what do you think, Denise, about that? How, do, how does it make you feel? Um, I, I totally agree with that because if we're on the, to continue on the tangent of, of personal trainers, I have, I used to have a wonderful personal trainer named April Sun and I adore her. I just can't swing going to her anymore. And my brief to her was push me as far as you think I can go. I will call you Hitler if I think you're doing too much but just do just do all over and just just make me flexible and just make me healthy all over and she did a great job and there were times 
when I came in, I was just in tears. I was crying and I was like, I just need a foam roll. And she would just roll the foam over me. Sometimes that was the workout. I paid $65 a pop for that, but it was, but it was cool. Um, anyway, April, if you're out there and you're listening, miss you. Can't wait to get back to you one of these days. Awesome. Um, but as far as respecting people's view of the world and their model of the world, absolutely. I agree with you hundred percent. If we stopped for a minute and just appreciated the fact that everybody has their own idea and everybody has their own opinion, we would get along so much better in this world. Mm. Across Amen in that. Mm -hmm. Amen in that. Because you know what? With April, she actually, you said what you wanted. You said you how you want to feel. And she says, okay. And listen to you. Versus I have my agenda. You said this. Well, screw your agenda. I have my agenda. This is what I want to have done with you. You guys you actually built a really reputable relationship. And you kept coming as long as you could afford, you know, to crack the nut on this, on this thing. Absolutely. But that's just, that's what it boils down to. And, 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 and how we always want to get opinionated. Let me tell you this. A subjective view is just your feeling of way things should be. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean the other person feels the same way you do. Mm -hmm. An objective, OB, means actual facts. Two plus two equals four. Absolutely. That's the actual fact. Feelings are all subjective and opinionated. And that's where in relationships, relationship to people, co-workers, family members, uh, looking for a new job. Once we're not in rapport and understand what someone's saying, because let's, let's put it like this. Most of us walk through a life, unlike ourselves, you and I, Denise, uh, with the idea of a mind read. Right. Now, until I meet someone actually can read someone's mind, I, I don't believe my reads. You have to tell me specifically what you want or what you need or how you feel, because it's the only way. This mind read idea is long gone. I used to a long time ago, or we create a complex equivalent. It means if A must equal B, then B must equal C. But most of us walk through the idea of we know what we know without knowing what we know. And challenging the idea, we just walk through these mind reads that we know what's happening. And that's what creates a lot of friction in relationships is you no know, complete a person's sentence without allowing, allowing them to speak as a mind read. Yep, absolutely. We are, we, you and I are both parents. We are not mind readers. Now you have, you have those intuitive moments where you might be, Ron and I, you might be working on a project and suddenly one of us voices an idea and the other one says, oh my God, I was just thinking about that. That's because you have a great, we have a great relationship and a great rapport and can sense where it's all going. And that's about working together. But yes. other than that, we're not mind readers. <laughs> so no, excuse me. I'm gonna give you an example of something, and this comes down to a personal relationship. Um, so when you're when in a relationship with somebody, you know, you, it's a constant growing and learning experience. You can't say you get together and I'm done, you know, yep. like like being married. You'll be like, oh, I'm married, done, or yep. I have a friend and done. No, it's a constant growing because we're evolving individuals, even though we're friends or in a relationship. We do evolve separately, but hopefully we can come back together. So my significant other, she is all about um, caring for individuals. Now, caring is very broad and not specific. Mm -hmm. So there's a situation in which um, a tree fell down a couple, couple months ago. And um, what happened in the situation was <clears throat> two things happened. First of all, a neighbor messed around back then to our grass, which we have a house and have a grass park. And out here in Washington, it rains all the time, so grass is always wet. Backs the trailer into the grass, gets stuck. So it creates this large kind of concave indentations in the grass. Oh, no. Pulls away. Yeah, pulls away. We come back and um, we look at the grass, like, what the hell? And we know our next door neighbor, they had some work done. So we text the neighbor and says, hey, you guys had people come to your house to work. They probably did a good job, but look what they did to our yard. So they felt bad. Two days later, knock on our door and they said, hey, you know, sorry what happened. We're gonna go and fix that up because it's it's not gonna hurt anything. It's just eyesore. You come home like, wait a minute, you did that. You didn't even know, you didn't say, I'm sorry. You just drove away like, uh, oh, well, whatever. It kind of sucks. So what that happens is that I, at that time, answered the door, she's working. And um, I opened the door up and the guy's like, hey, we couldn't take care of, the wife says, I took care of your yard for you. I was like, oh, cool, thank you so much. Oh, we see your tree fell down. 
what are you going to do about it? I said, oh, you know what? I don't have a chainsaw. I don't have anything. We've been trying to hire people to get it done, but, you know, it's like super expensive. And just it ha- it, since it's not blocking anything, it's just in our yard. It's okay, right? Because our yard. So it, it, it is what it is. It's not urgent. It, 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 it's it's not a urgent. smoldering flame. It's not hugely on fire. Right. Yeah. It's not a blaze. Yeah. So they're like, hey, well, they'll take the tree down for you. I'm like, are you sure? You know, because I'll compensate for your time paid. Oh, no, no, it's completely fine. We, we messed up your yard. Sorry. Cool. So I tell her what happened, and she's got to be upset, saying that how can you use the people that you don't care? I was like, what do you mean? She says, well, they're, they're obviously older. They have gray hair. I, I don't know if they're 50, 60, 100. I don't know. I didn't ask, right? But you just assume, just by looking, again, a mind read, they look older, so they're older, older than me. Okay. She says, you should be actually going out there and doing this to older people. We get them, uh, not a, 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 it's called the tree argument now. We're getting an argument because I says, look, I believe people have choices. My model world, people have choices. A, I said, are you sure? B, I said, I compensate. C was, they said, don't worry about it. I'm like, okay, I'm cool. I, I gave you a choice. You, you choose. Yep, absolutely. So, they, so in this they, case, they offered. You didn't ask, they offered. That was the key. So in this case, she gets very upset and we get a, a huge argument because she says, I don't care about people. I'm taking advantage of people. What they're going to think about us because they're older. And I says, look, you know, I, I respect the fact you care about people, but also respect the fact that I feel I did the best thing I could. I gave them two scenarios. They chose one. Hey, people have choices. Yeah. I'm not, I said, look, I don't create these complex equivalents on mind reads about what they're going to think about me, what they're going to feel about me. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. And I'm not going to spend time wasting. So, but the beautiful thing about this, it created a learning experience for us both, because now we learn how others reality to the world is like, she's really about caring about people, taking care of people, there for people. Me, I'm like, okay, well, I give you choices, you know, pick a choice, but it's just, we have to respect people's model world. It's not, I don't care because her model of caring is different than mine. And my model of, hey, I do care. I didn't say, hey, see that tree right there? You know, you sent you a gardener, take it down for me. You know, I didn't ask. And when I gave you two choices, you chose. So we call it the tree argument. That's, that's, the, and we always, <laughs> now we can laugh about it. But it, it was a great learning experience because I viewed her model of the world. She had the chance to view my model of the world. The bottom line about this, though, we will not agree on the model of the world, and that's completely okay. But I will respect and understand her model of the world and be more curious to her model of the world. That's my stance. And that's what we call the tree argument. Well, that is a really amazing tree argument. And I think the only thing, has the tree actually been removed now? It's long gone, yes, long gone. And did you go out and help said neighbor when they were cutting down the tree? No, actually I was busy working. I was doing something else. Well, that's unfortunate, but I mean, that's because really the only thing you could have done to make that scenario better is to, is to say to neighbor, when do you want to come and be there to help him as he was older, but he offered and it's done and now no more tree argument. So. No, it's not. But you yeah. see how something so small can just blow up because so big. A, person, a person has their eye view where things should be. One person has their view and they can't come together. And in the situation, we won't come together, okay? Yeah. And I mean, we won't because I can't, I can't step into her shoes and view her model of the world. I can't step in to see what she sees or what her thoughts are because her idea of growing up is totally different than mine. Mm-hmm. So the, I can understand, I can ask questions because I want to get an understanding. No difference, she can't jump into my shoes and understand my model of the world. Right. But we can respect the model of the world. Because there's no pointing fingers here. There's no right, wrong, good, or bad. It's just coming from a place of understanding. Now, in her view, I'm wrong, and I should do something better, and that's okay. Again, I'm going to respect her model of the world. My view is, well, okay, I did. I thought was right, and but I will respect the model of the world. And that's what comes down to arguments. I mean, Denise, you got to give me some good examples of, of how you would have done things different or what you would have done different. Oh God, on the spot here. Um, That's the best way to do it on the spot. It, it, no, it is the best way to do it. I think if I could have done something differently, um, I 
tongue tied? Yeah, kind of tongue tied. Um, okay, if I could have done things differently, uh, well, it's all back to the same old crap with my ex. Um, standing up for myself, voicing my opinion, making sure I was heard. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, here's an example from the other day when I was at the baseball game, which was really badass fun, I got to say. Um, I, I want to say this very delicately and very politely because I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying really hard to be over it and I need to be over it. Um, I, because the ballpark, um, like a lot of ballparks, um, it's in zones and you have to stay in your zone and now you have to order everything on the app and then go right to the person to go pick it up. You can't just wander and graze like we used to do. Right. And hopefully we'll all get back to that. Well, as an employee, uh, we used to be able to roam on our 30 minute break and get whatever we wanted to get. And I, thought I strongly voiced my opinion and my need last week uh, about what are we employees getting for food? Because we can't take our own food in. There's no employee break room. There's no place to keep it. We can't wander around. So how do we get food when we're working? And I was told that they would get back to us before opening day and they did not. I got fed on the day. It's okay. Let's not go there as to how it happened. I think what I would have done differently would be to not wait for them. And I should have circled back and said, Hey, what's going on? I should have probably taken, taken a punt, taken a risk and kept things in my car. Cause the parking lot where I, I got a half an hour for, for lunch, but where I park my car, it's like, six minutes to walk to and from the stadium. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I could have done things a little differently too. Okay. Um, that's the only thing I can think of right now because everything else that is, I'm butting heads within my life. I feel I'm right. And it's because it has to do with my son. Mm-hmm. He's now, right now, currently, as we speak, taking day one of two days of state testing. He was supposed to do stuff last week to prepare for it. Didn't do it. I didn't find out till last night. He hadn't done it. And today he was like, oh, I think I want to take this at school in person tomorrow. And I was like, well, Sunshine, you missed the window to take this at school today. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just right. I know he's 18, but I'm right. Sorry. <laughs> so the, then, the, then the deal is there is um, what value did you get out of that? What value are you getting? As far as my son, I don't, I, I can't figure out where I failed to instill in him that going to school, it just at least to see, I've only asked for minimum C's. Um, having a care factor about his appearance, having a care factor about his success in the world, having a care factor about helping out. I'm on him constantly about keep this place clean. Let's, if you can't get a paying job, let's do volunteer work. Let's do something. And it's, uh, oh my God. And I lead by example. And I don't understand why he doesn't come on board. I don't get it. I have a full time job. I have full time school. I have a part time job. I'm a full time mom and I've got the dog. And I, I don't you understand. Know. Wrong. First thing, pat yourself on the back. You're like, you're a parent. Do the best you can. Like every other parent out there with no handbook. There's no handbook to be the best parent. You just, you just got to figure, fill the pages as you go, okay? But one thing is, is that you are obviously grew up in a certain era where there's a certain values. Let's say your dad is still in you. Hey, we have family of four. You got to contribute. You got to help out. Volunteer work is helping out. You see someone's working, you pitch in. That was the kind of values that you have or principles you live a life by. Yep. While your your son may have a totally different set of principles. Well, this is the, these are the same principles that I was raised by. I've instilled on him since he was, you know, four. Yeah. You know, when he when he was four and wanted money to go to, you know, the ice cream truck or whatever that I was like, fine. 
I said, but you know what, if you want, if when the ice cream truck, cu truck comes around the future, you know, you're old enough now, you can do chores. And it was very simple, started simple. And then every year at the beginning of the school year, he'd come and ask for a raise. And every year I'd respond to him, what additional chores are you going to do to earn that raise? Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't been able to pay him his allowance in like the three and a half years, but I've always made sure he has what he, he needs. It's just mm -hmm. not, it's, it, it's just a different scenario you know interesting but, I've, but so, I've, I've made sure he has pocket money and i've made sure he's you know got everything he needs and ask him to do things and i come home and i'm like you know it's one o'clock in the morning they're not done i want to blow my top but it's one in the morning i want to go to bed right see this is more of a this i feel like this is turning into more of a coaching session for me <laughs> that, you that know, actually and that's talking the, about how fantastic we are as coaches <laughs> You know, have you ever thought about this? Inherently, there's a set of values you want to live by and you have lived by and they work for you, wonderful. Let's like the example you gave about the ballpark. There's a value there of communication. Hey, yep. is what it is and that value is missing and it makes you feel very upset. Like, hey, look, you know, you should just communicate. I just want to know, yes or no, yeah or nay, whatever it is. And, and this boils down to the fact that your son will never be you, even though you did the best you can. It's still the values. You're doing the best thing you can too. It's still the values. He will never be you. And the only way to get him on board is to understand he's not going to be like me. Because that will save you a lot of frustration for yourself. He's not, he's not going to be like me. He's his own individual person, respecting his model of the world, and ask more empowering questions. I'll give you a good example. I have to get myself, I have to get myself on the read it. It was out the blue. For my son, I have, I have a 72 year old son, <clears throat> and he said this. Um, so we were, first we're going back and forth. One thing we're going back and forth, I'll give you one example, is he got a job at McDonald's, which is fine. You know, he's 17 years old. You're going to get a, uh, you're going to be flip, flipping burgers. Okay. This is what it is. Right. So he's working eight to 13 hours uh, a week, um, painting football, all that stuff. And he says, make $7.25 an hour. So I ask him, hey, let's get on the phone and talk. Because the thing is, he wants me to Uber him back and forth to work. So I wanted to use this as a lesson to say, wait a minute, if you're making, I said, I did the math, make maximum of 13 hours a week. You make $7.25 an hour. That's only $94.25 per week, not gross, not net. So I'm getting on the horn and says, look, hey, let's do the math because if it's 20 bucks, you will be back and forth. You're already in a hole, man. I mean, I can, I'll do this. I was going to support in the first three weeks because it takes a couple weeks to get your paycheck going and stuff like that. But then you got to support yourself because it's responsibility, but we haven't gone on horn. But I got a text this morning, which is kind of out the blue. And it says, um, look down here. Dad, why do why we live just to die? Why do we live just to die? So wow. I, it was really powerful. I was like, okay, so I, he's at school right now. I respond back, what do you mean? I, I want to understand what's going on. Right. I can't all of a sudden jump in there. Okay, this, 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 and this. Okay, what's going on? Was something said? Was something read? Was something told? Did he have an awakening moment? I don't know. So we have to talk about that. And not, now he hasn't responded back yet. But I said, hey, look, you know, uh, how come you're out of curiosity? How come you are feeling this way? What happened? I, I need to understand something. I, I can't come to a conclusion because I don't understand nothing. But that's what we have to do as parents is we have to ask some questions get them all the world we're back to that coaching and back to that but we have to understand where they're coming from because now uh, my son is 17 he's now in a different environment than i grew up he's in a different state than i grew up at he's yeah. at a different idea of life than i'm at i mean he plays football my dad hated the fact he played football he hated it um because came back from religion thing that you know you don't play sports because bad association spoils useful habits that's a whole Bible scripture thing that Joe's wouldn't come up with, which at this point doesn't make sense. But anyways, I'm going to talk to him because I want to understand his model of the world and what's going on. Why does he feel that way? I don't know. Yeah. And, you know, my son and I have talked before and his big thing is he just, he wants to make video games. And I haven't, through coaching and with school and with everything else and just being a mom, I've been supportive, but I've said, you know, you can't 
you're not going to make a video game that you're going to be able to sell if you don't get an education. Mm -hmm. And you're going to learn more about if you take these kinds of classes. I'm trying. I'm really, really trying. Uh, well, if you go back to what you did for the chores as a kid and say, okay, you like to work for things, right? You're like, yeah, 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 I do. Okay, so what do you want? I want X, Y, Z. Okay. So here's a list. Make it as long as you want. Once you check off every single box of this list, we can talk about what you what you want, mm -hmm. because you have to give up something in order to receive something. So you expect for things to fall in your lap. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't happen that way. And I've, I've always made him. I've always made him wait and earn for things. And when he's like, "Oh, I want this," I'm like, "Well, sunshine, how are you going to figure that? You know, how are you going to do that? You know, money doesn't grow on trees. I don't know. Well, we're going to figure this out. But let's get back to whatever the topic at hand was, which is look at respecting people's worlds. And yes, I need to respect his world. I need to respect the fact that um, while he is in very, while he is incredibly smart and a lot smarter than he gives himself credit for, the way he has to learn information is totally different from everybody else. And we still haven't found the key to make that happen. So the key's there. The key is there. I haven't found it yet. Yet is the operative word. I'm going to keep trying. What if you already have the key inside you? You just put in the wrong key in the wrong keyhole. That could be too. That yet that is very true, and that could be as well. But I need to uh, take some time and keep exploring that. Okay. All right. Let's do that. So, yeah. how would you respect a person from all the world? What's your opinion about that? I, I like your old school sayings. I love it. The guy that cheats on the golf game, cheats in life. You know. One finger pointing at you, three fingers pointing back. So you got to give us something. I love those. Oh my gosh. Um, I know you got a lot. See, now I'm feeling like the gray hair is really coming out. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're how old now, Ron? You're how old? Uh, I'll be 38 in three months. So I'm 37 technically. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, so um, yeah, you're 10 and I'm nine. So that's cool because I add my numbers together. Um, be very wise about which first number you choose there, sunshine. Right. Um, <laughs> um, what was the question again? I'm going to cut some, some old school cliches. For... Yes, cliches. How do you respect a person all of the world? Because we, we always want to point, this is right or that's wrong. You should be done this way. This is how it's supposed to be done. Ah, blah. This is always constant point. How do we really just get a saying that we can remember and that we can just out align ourselves with people's respect of their view well i guess it comes down to whatever floats your boat i mean ah. what floats your boat and there's stuff that floats my boat and you know because our little boats can just happily kind of coast down the river of life but it's when you and yes our boats will bump on occasion but if you're purposely ramming me with your boat because you want me to be in your boat and you want me to have your ideas that's not going to work but let's just go happily float along in our little boats and we'll bump on occasion because it's natural and then we'll just keep on going so you know what floats your boat where floats your boat now let me transpire that into action let me see here smile wave throw them a throw them a drink yeah. or a cocktail let them tie up for a while to share your energy as you're going floating down ah. the river of life you know i was gonna i was gonna say you know what inherently as you float down the river in these two boats Mm -hmm. Technically, the boats are the same size, filled mm -hmm. with the same junk, yeah, and filled with the same problems. Why don't you look at your other man and be like, he's just a reflection of me. That's that's the way you do it. He or she's a reflection of me. Yeah, I know. And they I hit know. something right there, an I aha know. moment. There's an aha moment. <laughs> Well, then there's hope for the future because I wasn't all together when I was at his age. So, and I look, I blossomed. He's a late bloomer. I'll accept that. Yeah. He's I mean, that's the thing is we're a mirror reflection of ourselves. So inherently to go out there and point fingers at other people, we basically point three fingers back at ourselves, right? So one finger point forward, three fingers pointing back. And we have the same size boat filled with the same mess. Now, it, your mess may be feel totally different. It may have different colors, it may look a little chaotic. His or she, her, his mess or hers mess may look the same way. It's the same stuff, just experienced different. That's it.
wrapped up in different bows, wrapped up in different, yeah, different paint yes. jobs, all that other stuff. Yep, I get it. But yeah, what, because what makes you happy is totally different for, well, a little bit different than what makes me happy. And that's okay. So that's it's totally okay. I love the times that we come together and we share our good fortune. We, we cry on each other's shoulders. We commiserate. We coach. We cajole. We support. Yes. You know, we cheer. I love that. Mm -hmm. We cheer and we do all sorts of things. The, the biggest thing to build more resilience in your life, the biggest thing to really understand that someone has the model of the world is one thing is understand you have a unique support system or sorry, unique identity. Your identity is different than theirs and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But you can learn from each individual person's identity and more or less ask the right questions, create a support system. You know, create resilience in yourself so that way you don't judge. Because more of the time you judge or point fingers or create this worldview, there's less space in your mind. Your mind's only so big, 100% is only so much. You can't go 110%. No, 100% is 100%. If you take right. some away some of that uh, uh, worldview and come into these complex equivalents and mind reads, you make room for something new that's going to give you more power for yourself than anything else. That's the main thing. So I want to say, everybody, Thanks for listening to another He Said, She Said, and episode 14. 14. Yes, we are making Moving progress. Forward. Making progress. I like this one step at a time, one block at a time. We will get there and we will create things that we should be talking about daily. And again, this is Ronald Johnson. And what I do is I help high performers that are facing burnout, creating strategies to reach their full potential of joy and peace in their life. Thanks for listening. And I'm Denise Lewis, and I'm with GrandSlamCoaching.com, and I am a performance-based coach, both on and off the field, and I want you to have your best performance ever. And as you can see from today's topic, I need a little bit of help getting my performance back up to top gear. It's okay, because I love it, and how can I expect to help people if I can't turn and get help myself? So please reach out to me at www.GrandSlamCoaching.com. And let's make every day a ah, great gym day. Ah, Yay. <laughs> My clients are six and three. I'm so excited. Yay. Woo -woo. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Thanks. See you next time.